All right, going to sell a few things in Krita, and uh, hopefully I've got a keystroke display working. So when I use keyboard shortcuts, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Starting with a nice blank screen, we've got a background layer, which I use Will You Leave Alone, and one of the first things I like to do is add a few extra layers and figure out what I want to do, like what's going to be the first thing? Say, a lake. And that sort of did this. That's odd. Lake. Lake. There we go. So, helping creating the layers first and naming them. Helps keep you help helps you keep things separate, so you don't work accidentally work on something in the wrong layer and not be able to edit it properly without messing up something on a different layer. So say trees and sky. and sun. So this just sort of helps you organize, make sure everything stays separate. So if you don't quite like the way something looks, you can change it without affecting the rest of the drawing. And you can work on things in any order, and adjust and adjust witzes in front of the other. Usually like to work, I guess, forwards, so things that are going to be behind other things get worked on first. It's just like painting. You paint something and then you paint something else on top of it. So let's try making a lake to start with. Uh, let's add one more layer. That was a copy, but it doesn't matter because I haven't done anything with it yet. Call the ground. There we go. Let me just move this a bit. Uh, let's just move it to right there, so it'd be good. So, I'm going to do something, some real basic stuff. I'm going to use paint brushes, find a nice blue that I like for the water, and not try to be too precise yet. So we'll just start by putting some water across like that. Then if I go to the ground, change color to A decent looking brown, something like that. The ground is above, the ground layer is above the lake layer, so it will sew up on top of it. I might want a smaller brush, something like that. And we've got that. This brush might not be perfect because it kind of blend stuff on top. Let's try this. Now I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that ground layer. This brush is a little bit small. We're going to try doing some ground across. About lucky the way it's leaving that ends. So Control Z undo. 
I will find a brass. Let's go back to digital. Let's just get a regular solid circle brass. We'll just go across like this. And I actually want to do it to have a different looking profile, something like that. So there's the water, there's the lake, there's the ground. Now let's try going back to that other brass. Different, a regular paint brass. And select a slightly different color. See what this does. Oh, something like that. And we'll be messing with this anyway. So for mountains, I'm just going to use a simple stamp that's under textures. It has a basic mountain stamp right there. And you can change the size, make them as big as you want. Let's make them a s something like this. You can see mountains off in the distance. Make it bigger. Something you could do is build them up like that. And so we've just got some basic mountains going up here like that. I actually want to put the mountains behind the ground layer so you get a nice cutoff like this. The ground goes right up to the mountains. Now for the ground layer, I'm going to, there's actually a stamp called floor, and let's try a bit Let's try that right at the edge here to sort of blend it into the mountains. Add something else. Let's undo that real quick. What you could do here is turn on the alpha lock. So on this layer, it won't draw anything that isn't already. It will only draw over what's already there, because if you turn everything else off, turn the background off, that space where there's nothing drawn, turn these off, this is all that's drawn on this layer. Now if you try to draw anything else, because I've turned the alpha lock on, it will only draw on this layer, so you don't have to worry about getting stuff on the edges that will cover up anything on other layers behind it. So that's a blend in with the mountains nicely. And I could have it be a, just a little bit more concentrated going towards the mountains to blend in with them and a little bit less coming away from them. Turn our lake back on. Also you see here, because the alpha lock is still on, it doesn't draw anything over the lake. So it usually works well to just grab a couple different colors, mix them all up in here.
and we're pretty much just going for a basic, basic looking ground. Add a little bit darker. You can turn the opacity of the brush down so it doesn't completely cover stuff up. I just blend stuff in a little bit so it doesn't look quite as unnaturally separated. A little bit along here. And that's a decent looking ground. So now we can see things are starting to take shape. Let's throw our background on real quick. And I'd like to work on the sky just real quick. Put some real basic stuff in. Sky will go for... I think I'll go for a gradient sky. So we're going to pick a very deep blue, not quite black, but very deep blue for the top. And I'm just going to hold shift here. Shift actually, if you hold shift first and then move the mouse back and forth, it changes the brush size. So that's useful for doing quick changes. Now let's try this. If I start and I want to put the opacity all the way up. So there's a blue for us. Let's see how that looks. And the reason it did that, it looks strong, is because I still have it on the stamp. So I'm going to undo that, go to a paintbrush, and use that instead. Hold Shift. Hold shift, click the mouse, change the size. So let's see how this looks. That's okay. And the sky is going to be moved down below the mountains as well. So that it's behind them. So I've got my top layer. Now, I don't want a real light blue. I want to all dark colors. So a dark, slightly darker, slightly brighter purple. Let's try that. And then a dark red. And Slightly brighter orbs. Just a bit more. Now you see the stamps for the mountains don't have anything behind them. So if we go to the mountain and we might want to actually fill that. So we're on mountain, the mountain layer, and we just want to f make sure that nothing shows up behind them. So we'll fill it with white and see we need to select a brush and let's turn the background off so we can see what happens. If we fill this with white, for that layer, everything that isn't already there gets filled with white. Now let's see how it looks. Uh, it's a bit tricky. I really sort of filled this with white first, and then put the mountains on top of them. I'm 
It may be easier to just redo this. Let's try making another layer, filling it with white, going back to our stamps for mountains, selected our tool, our brush tool, so we get the stamp, and we get a brush with the color, build them up a bit, because this is pretty quick. So now let's see what happens if we turn the sky on, and the problem here is These mountains have hollow spaces in the texture, which I want because it makes it look like there's snow on them. But let's try this right here because the sky is behind it, it won't sew up. But if I select this area, and let's expand it, grow the selection by a pixel, maybe another one. So I buy two pixels, so it sort of gets in there a little more. That looks okay. And we delete that area. The sky sews up a bit. We've still got some stuff right there. So what we could do in the tool options is try feathering it a bit. So it picks more stuff up, grow the selection by a bit. Or we can, well let's get rid of that and see how it looks. And grow that. And this is, this is a bit of a finicky way to do it. If I'd set it up better, there'd probably be It'd probably work a lot better, but I'm just going to grab that. And those are because the brush for the sky actually did some. So I'm just going to try. I'm going to get the obvious stuff. And then I'm just going to deselect everything, which is Control Shift A. So that deselects everything, because you can only affect areas that are selected, but if you deselect everything, you can affect everything else. I'm going to go grab an eraser tool, get it fairly big, and just erase this clutter off of our new mounted layer. Get it a little smaller. Get rid of this stuff. Like I said, there are, I probably sort of done this a little differently, but we don't make mistakes, we just learn new ways to fix things. I'm just kidding, we make lots of mistakes. This kind of gives a little artistic interpretation to the mountains anyway. 
makes it a little more jagged. Add some, add some little, can add some little uh, odd things on that. That didn't look good, so I'm just gonna get that. Again, that's because the brush for the sky didn't quite fill anything in, which will be. I'll just fix that real quick. So we've got our boards here. So we want a more yellow, light yellow color. And we need to go back to paintbrush. A lot of these paint brushes, it doesn't matter so much what you use. So there we just fill in a little yellow behind it. And let's do it. Let's say our sun is right going down right around here. Oops, got to put that back. We do. Let's turn everything back on. You can see our lake is covered up also by the mountains background because the mountains are in front. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Get a big eraser going and just and I'm on the wrong layer. So let me rename this. I'm just going to delete this one. And rename that to mountains. And we're going to stay beyond that. We've got our eraser and everything. And turn the ground on to. The ground's actually in front of the mountains. I suppose the lake could be easily put in front of the mountains too. We'll just go ahead and do that. The lake goes in front of the mountains, but behind the ground or under. So it looks like this. Alright, we're moving forwards a bit. Let's put in some basic trees. We don't have anything on it. We go to our textures and we'll go add some, let's add some grass. Uh, I want to grass pats. There we go. So we can That would be interesting. Uh, hmm. Let's try a couple different things. So first of all, we need to get the right color. Nice. Start with a nice dark green. Let's see how that looks. Now, the tricky thing here is the Technically, the lakes would be in front of the ground. Let's see if I can do something. Lake, select this area. No. See, it's selecting this whole area. That's visible because that's the entire area of the of the lake when you take the ground away. What I want to do is just get let's try this. And work it with that. So now I've got this select, this area selected. I'm going to add some fuzziness, select it again. 
now it's got that whole area selected. So the, th the nice thing is when you have a select zone, it is persisted across layers. So if I move to the lake, it's still got that area selected. Now if I go to erasers, and let's turn off the ground so we can see what's happening, you can and go to our brush, which is an eraser right now, it will only affect what's in that selection. So I can erase and only on the selected layer. So if I hold down, if I try to erase stuff here, nothing happens. Try to erase stuff here, nothing happens. What I could do is just erase away that bit. Now I can turn the ground on, move the lake layer up so it's on top of the ground and in fact on top of the trees slash grass. Actually let's split this up. Let's add a layer. We can have trees and we can have grass because more layers is always better. So now we have grass and trees, and the lake is on top of those. And what that lets me do, I'm going to deselect Control Shift A. Actually, having that selection might be good. So we can reselect, or we can undo to get that selects it back, control Z. So now I'm going to go back to our textures, grab a grass pats, we're on the grass layer, we've got a nice dark green, and we can just go wild, not worry about putting stuff on top of the lake, because actually for two reasons, one we've got just the ground area selected, and the lake is on top of this layer, so anything you put on this layer wouldn't sew up anyway. Uh, let me undo that real quick. So a nice trick when you have a stamp like this, you can make... You can make the stamp large in the foreground when it's close to you. and then shrink it down as you go across farther away. And it gets you a nice sense of distance. Because you see these clumps of grass getting appearing to be smaller, the further away you get, making them look like they're at a distance. And that pattern doesn't have to be too precise. You could pretty much just fill it in. And it gives a nice sense of scale there. So everything fades off to a smaller size at a distance. So now we've got some ground, we've got some grass. Not sure why blue is sewing up through there. We've got a basic, some basic grass cover. We can add a little more, let's make them a bit bigger. We can add some nice, uh, slightly brighter green stuff right at the edge of the lake. 
where you'd expect lots of vads, lots of fresh vegetation. Typically, where there's water, there's more stuff that's bright green compared to further away. And just a little bit of a layer behind it to give it a little depth. Maybe with a slightly... Well, I won't try to get too fancy with it. This is mostly just a demonstration and a test. So... That's pretty good for our grass, and I had a bunch of tree templates on my other computer, but I don't have them set up yet on this. Now this is a... Uh, Let's try to see what these look like, because I haven't used these before. Let's add another an experimental layer and see what these look like. Ooh, gives you a rock, and it should, that should, that's strange. Oh, it's got a... Uh, Let's pick a bat. That's a bit tricky because it's got some transparent parts. Looks like it looks like this. So if we add on to it, we get some rocky stuff, some rocky formation stuff. That's interesting. I may play with that a bit more later. I haven't used that particular one before. We've got some other... This may be a new sex zone. So, we'll play with that play with that later probably. I want to add some trees here, but I may skip that because I don't have my textures for those. So anything else that would be good. We could throw some, some extra. Let's pick some dark, slightly darker green and stuff and see what that looks like. And, of course, I'm on the wrong layer. Just got rid of that experimental layer. Got to bring it back. Back on the grass. And... Maybe a darker green. Yeah. Just sort of fill in the gaps. A little darker, a little further away from the from the water. Of course, with these stamps, they're all the same, so you have to be a little imaginative to get them to not just look like an attack of the clones effect. All right, that would be okay for our grass for now. Let's get back on our lake. Deselect, and add some water, add some ripple effects. This is a very trial and error process, usually. Let's see what this looks like, because, yeah, you can add some of that, and you can just go across. leave some 
gaps. Mix it up a bit. Have some streaky bits where it's a little or go diagonally back and forth and just try to get it to look right to you. Then you could play with the colors a little bit. Maybe put the opacity down, add some pink. Make it look nice. And even a little yellow. This is very much a trial and error process until you, and you kind of just have to get a feel for it. Now right here I'm going to add a little green because there's green right along it so it should reflect that just along the edge and that is a problem because it was going over it so let's see what everything looks like. I take everything off except the lake. You can see that some of this stuff was added on. So that's unfortunate. I sort of turned alpha lock on earlier. I'll just erase very roughly or let's try something. We can go back and reselect. We've still got that, and we can just hit delete. For some reason, it doesn't delete everything. You have to hit delete a couple times. So now we've got rid of all that. We're going to deselect, turn alpha lock on our lake section, and now it will only affect the green will only affect, adding these green ripples will only affect right on the lake because I don't want it to mess up the actual grass. Just going along until it looks right. And I needed to zoom out a little. I sort of zoomed out a little more before because I need to go back and add some right in here, just a bit. To get that nice look, now we turn everything back on. That is so to anything. We can see we're getting somewhere. I'm uh, probably let's take a look at making the sky look a little better. We're just going to go to Jizzador. Or maybe Let's look at paint, because there are some good blending tools. We've got blender like that, rake, textured soft. Let's try a couple different things. So one really good thing to do, if you're not absolutely sure what you're doing, you go to the layer that you want, the sky in this case, and you copy it and then you turn off the original. So you keep, that's like a quick save. 
of your progress. You keep the original and you experiment on the copy. So let's see what happens if we use this particular blender brush. We'll put the opacity at, say, 40, larger size, so it doesn't take us forever, and just sweeping across. So sweeping a bit across, back and forth. Just blended stuff a bit diagonally up so it doesn't all look the same. Here we just blend each layer of the sky back a bit. You can go back like that, back and forth. for a nice effect. Maybe a little across like this. I think I liked it better the other way. So I'll do that a couple times. Now, the next layer, back and forth. Again, this is a lot of trial and error, and just try to get a feel for it until it works the way you, until it works the way you, until you get to the point where you can make it look the way you want to. Get some blue down in here. I think that looks pretty good. So, again, I'm going to make another copy. Turn the old copy off, and that's my backup. But I think we'll be okay. So, here we have the sun, a layer for the sun to do our lighting on. Lighting with the sun is pretty easy with this technique. We want the Adjust Dodds tool, and to set the color to, we can experiment mostly with white, little yellow, and we start off like this. Let's say our sun is right about here. Now, we don't want it in front of the mountains quite like that. So, we're going to move it This might be tricky, but we'll see what happens. Because that... Yes, that's still in front of the sky, but behind the mountains. This is why setting your layers up with what goes in front of and behind other things is very, very useful. So here's our sun, and you can see it's behind the mountains, in front of the sky, the effect is in front of the sky, and we're just adding some stuff. Let's try a little brighter yellow. and at a smaller size, or actually at a larger size, but a lower opacity to give a nice effect like this on the sky. We might well, let's see what happens. So, we've got the sun, that's the effect. We can see what if that individual, that layer individually, 
a little up here makes it look good symmetrical now what we're going to do we've been using just the brush tool freehand brush tool with adjust dots now I'm going to add another layer all the way on top and use it for lighting the general environment. Let me add it's just a bit more right there. That looks good. So for lighting the general, the entire environment. Now I'm going to use the lot the horizontal line tool and we may want to use larger or smaller. This is to give you sun rays across it. So you start in the middle of the sun and go, say, like that. Now that is way too opaque. So we're going to undo that, put it down very low actually because we don't want to block out the color we just want to highlight it. I'm going to start at the edge and go like that. To get this nice lighting effect across the entire pixel. Usually you want to try to avoid doing going straight up, straight across, straight down. You want stuff at a diagonal. And you can see it's sort of overriding that the sun at the middle. I'll address that in a second as soon as I get the general stuff done. So now you don't want to have complete overlap, so what I'm going to do now is bring the size down and just add some extra sun rays. Going all the way across. And this is still on a light yellow, so it's not super bright, so just a little more like that. That's a little too horizontal, so let's try it like this, like this, like that, right there. Cross bit. And like that. So what I'm going to do here is make it a little more white and just add, save it back to the freehand brush, and just add some extra white right in there. So it looks like the sun is just setting. Now, something you could do is go over to this, I'll just multiply, grab a darker color, and try adding some shadows. Like right, not quite like that. Right at the along the mountains and along the base of the mountains. Let's try out its some basic shadows. Maybe a little less blue in it, a little grayer. Let's see what this looks like. I think I'll skip the shadows for the moment because the sun is pretty much getting everything. However, we can get this 
go back to Dodds and have a really bright, some really bright streaks across here, across the lake from the sun. From the sunlight coming directly on it. And a few, just a few extra bright spots. Uh, that may be a bit too much. Let's see. And you have to be careful because you can only do undo so many things with Krita here. I think just a bit is good. I'll put in some sparkly, some small sparkly bits. Eh, and actually you could use a uh, stamp tool for that. Let's look at our textures and sparkles. Still on white. Let's see how those sew up. Not bad. Couple sparkles. Vary the size. Change the opacity a bit so they're not quite as bright everywhere. And you can just play with that a bit. Depending on how sparkly you like stuff. And there are... I will have to get my extra stuff installed on this computer sometime because there are different, you can get different shaped sparkles. Actually, let's take a look at the brush tip because you can edit the brush tip and there's a lot of extra stuff up here. Like... Not as much as I was hoping for. So we won't mess with it too much right now. Let's just bring our size back up a little, add a couple larger ones. And just a few really big ones. That might be a few too many. And a little, let's put them a little further apart. That looks alright. You don't want to have two bouts of anything be too symmetrical, because nothing in nature looks really symmetrical, and it's actually quite difficult to get something to look Non symmetrical. Alright, so we've got that. I'm going to add some more white sun to the sun rays here. And we want to go back to Dizador. Da or. Yeah, Dodds. And let's see how things look. We'll start from here. It's sort of that's far too opaque. Not quite that, but we just want to add a little extra flavor, you could say. Something like a core to eat sun ray and try to get it to line up good. Yeah, some of these aren't perfectly aligned, but that's okay. I 
I'm going to make these a little bit Going to make the ones coming down here a little bit less opaque so it doesn't drown stuff out. Two bots. And I would say that that is not too bad for just about an hour of work. I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully learned something useful. Bye-bye.